Hello, it's uh, Paul Beckwith back. Um, I think the last few videos uh, worked out okay, so I'm going to uh, keep going and show a few more um, details. Um, so, in this case, um, we've got um, the Antarctica continent here. Um, this is the Antarctica Peninsula, and um, you can see these jet streams going around, and like in the Northern Hemisphere, um, they're very fractured. Um, there's very large waves, um, and um, the red area is uh, wind speeds somewhere in this area, 70 to 90 uh, meters per second. Um, and I pointed out in the previous video that um, parts of the jet stream um, seem to peel off. Um, so you get this kind of wave here, and it kind of peels off and uh, tries to go up onto the continent here um, and is quickly repelled because there's strong winds towards the coast all around Antarctica. It's called the Katabatic uh, winds because we're high elevation here so the air is colder, lower elevation, the air is warmer, the cold air is denser and it basically avalanches down the hill um, the air. Um, and then over here um, I've got the temperature anomalies for the Antarctica Peninsula. So um, you can see large uh, anomalies here. This is about 10 degrees Celsius, warmer than normal. Remember when I say an anomaly, it's a difference between what we have here and the norm. Um, so uh, you can see these large um, uh, positive temperatures. There's also stuff going on in South America. Um, and the other continents, Africa and Australia. Um, so there you go, a nice strong anomaly here, positive, also here, and also here in this part of Antarctica. And then you can see some cold um, anomalies uh, coming here and also uh, showing up here, I guess, in the, in, in, uh, in the southern part of Africa and also in the... Um, uh, western part, southwestern part of Australia. Um, so um, I'm going to show you, I'm going to move over here now. Um, I don't drop my camera. And this is Antarctica again. All of these images are, are synchronized, so every new cycle is three hours in the GFS model, which runs seven days from December 17th to the 21st. So over here, um, you can see the absolute uh, the temperature measurements at two meters, so surface temperature measurements. Um, and what you can see is um, these pinks appearing here um, are about minus 40 to minus 50 degrees Celsius. Um, and uh, you can see um, that they fade in and out from one one image, you know, through between like in from three hour increments, they come in, they're in for about six hours and they fade out again and so on. And you can see uh, some temperatures uh, coming here, uh, chunks coming up of uh, warmer air. That air is, uh, is, is uh, zero to 10 degrees. And then over here, um, this shows the precipitation. Again, it's, these are all synchronized images. So the greens are rainfall and the uh, purples are mixed precipitation and the snow you can see in the blue blue colors um, so the snow um, does reach the coast of the Antarctica continent it does breach up on the coast but you'll notice that it doesn't um, get too far inland and the precipitation levels are very low basically Antarctic's a uh, desert um, you get if there's water vapor in the air at all, it wouldn't be detected on this. And, uh, you know, it can just, like, freeze and fall out of the air. is like uh, angel dust, they call it, I think. Um, or diamond dust, or not angel dust, I guess, diamond dust. <laughs> um, so uh, I wanted to show you this about Antarctica, um, just a bit more detail. But the, uh, the key thing uh, to note is that... Um, these, these changes in um, circulation patterns um, are global. Um, there's, uh, there's, uh, they're carried down and there's um, 
We know this um, because extreme weather events aren't just occurring in the northern hemisphere, they're also happening in the southern hemisphere. Um, so it's important to understand the connections between the two hemispheres. Thank you.